Hey, Angel, this is Matt Fife from R&B Haven. What's going on, man? Hey, nothing much, man. I appreciate you doing this. When it comes to Goodfellas, every time I get somebody who who shows interest or is asking about Goodfellas, like, like I get excited because Goodfellas was my baby from the beginning. And, like, I there was a website also who contacted me a while ago. It was called No Skips, No Scratches. And and they had a a, a thing about Goodfellas, about where, what, what the hell happened to Goodfellas. And, and it's funny because the guy was based out of Detroit, and I actually flew to Detroit to the interview. With, if you go on YouTube, you can see the, the interview, and it, it's called Goodfellas Resurface. And it, and it explains, like, a lot of the stuff that happened with the group and how the group started and all that stuff. You know, I love, I'm, I'm a big fan of 90s R&B and the group scene. And I watched an interview from Planet Groove back in the day. And oh, I you saw, saw the, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the other members, like, they kept looking at you as, like, it was Angel's idea. Angel got us into this. Angel did this. For me, it's, it's a great opportunity to talk to you and get into the nitty-gritty of how it all went oh, down. Oh, no, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome, yeah. So I, I have a bunch of questions for you. I thought we'd go from the beginning you know, all the way to today in your career. And so, of course, okay. the starting point, it seems to be your time in TKA. So how, how did you get involved? <laughs> yeah. How did you get involved in TKA? Do you know the group? I, I wasn't aware of it at the time. <laughs> but I've listened to some songs, watched some music videos. <laughs> very different than what I was well, expecting. Yeah, well, TKA was a, a Latin trio based out of Spanish Harlem, New York. I actually got into the group, like, right out of high school. I graduated in high school in 86. So, like, around 88, we replaced a member, A.B. Cruz, who went on to do a solo record, and I ended up joining the group. Me and him had been best friends for a while. Our girlfriends were best friends, and we grew together. And I was actually a big fan of his. You know, the TK was on Tommy Boy Records. Tommy Boy Records had Queen Latifah, Digital Underground, um, Naughty by Nature, Tommy Boy was loaded. So he was working with TK. I, when, then when, I, when I replaced him in 88, that was kind of like the height of the group at that point. So, um, you know, I just went, I went on tour and, you know, we started doing shows all over the world. And it was like my first time in Japan. You know, we went to every major city. We were the, one of the first male trio. They, at the time, they called it Latin hip hop. Um, but now they they put it in this thing called freestyle music, which I don't particularly like. And, you know, you had groups like Stevie B, The Cover Girls. But, yeah, I, I started with TKA then. We, the, the group broke up in 92. And then one, uh, one of the singers in the group went ahead and, and did K7 and, and the Swing Kids. And he had a, a big record called Come Baby Come and Zunga Zang, which was pr- pretty big for him. And I didn't do anything for a couple of years until I decided that I wanted to do R&B because R&B yeah. was where I came from. Like, I listened to R&B. I was a big R&B hip-hop fan. I just got put into a group like TK, who was a dance pop group, but that wasn't what I really wanted to do. So when I got the opportunity to do something that I wanted, I said, you know what, I'm going to put together my own group. So when I went ahead and I went and got two brothers, and, you know, the first one was a friend of mine, and he was like, yo, I know this guy. And, you know, he's been singing demos, and he's in this group, and I said, well, let me meet him. And it just turns out that he's from Miami, Florida, but he was living in New York. And, he, and the crazy thing is that he was living, like, three blocks a week from me in Spanish Harlem. So, and this was the Louis A. Van Jr., the, the lead singer, the one who, who sang Sugar and A.T. And, and, the, and the rest of the songs. So me and him met up, and he sang for me, and I was like, I told him, I'm going to make you a star. I want to put together a group, and I want you to be the lead singer. And, you know, like, he looked at me like I was crazy, like he didn't believe me. And I was like, okay, you know, just hang with me. What I did was I, I called Peter Lord and Jeff Smith from the family stand. They told me to come down to the studio. We sang for them. And I, I told them what my idea was. And it was like, Angel, whatever you want, let's do it. I'm, I'm with it. And, you know, I met the family stand through touring with TKA. But we, you know, we used to do award shows and I used to see them and we used to perform and I used to see them. You know, I'm the type of person that I, if I meet people throughout the years, I always kind of stay in contact and try not to burn those bridges because you never know when you would meet them. So when I finally called them to tell them about the idea, 
and then we started recording the album with the family stand. You did a good job there. Like I was, I had a list of questions, and you kind of kept hitting on each one. <laughs> and that was the part I was most interested in when I was. I heard, you know, on the Planet Groove interview, DeLouis mentioned how you set them up with the family stand and the studio, and it was an interesting thing to me. Of now with the internet, I could see how you could maybe track them down and contact them. But that's why I was curious is how you got to the family stand in the first place. Right. And you said that was through TKAs. You had that connection form and right, right. The phosphorus. Even now, like I've met people throughout the years. Like, do you remember the the, the rap group, the Gorillas? Oh yeah, absolutely. They had that song. I got sunshine in a bag. Well, his name is the Automator, and his real name is Dan Nakamura. He's a Japanese guy from San Francisco, California. And I met Dan in San Francisco in like the late 80s and he's been my friend ever since and before he was just starting music or whatever and I remember bringing Black Rob the rap artist to him in 92 to record with him and this, this is before Rob was anybody before Dan was anybody and now you know now it's, it's history you know Black Rob is Black Rob with you know Bad Boy and Puff Daddy and, and Dan the Automator has gone on to do major things with major artists and, like, these are, like, really close friends of mine. But that's the idea. Like, I've always had relationships with a lot of these people that I met along the way, and they're, like, personal friends of mine now. Yeah, definitely definitely good to lay that foundation. <laughs> you never know when you'll need it right. and how to work yep. out. So with the album, I see when I look at the track list that Peter Lord's on almost every one, and so it seems like the family stand was very heavily involved in the development process. Yeah, they were they were actually I I believe we signed a production deal with them and and which I had no problem doing because they were gonna take on this project and there was no guarantees that it was gonna work and we weren't putting no money up for anything, it was just on the strength of a friendship and they saw that the talent was there because the Louis Avan Jr. is an incredible singer and he had tried and when I found him he kind of wasn't gonna do music anymore. He stopped and when I brought him back to the table, you know, he was able to do what he wanted to do and what he loved. They saw the potential in, in, in what it is that we were doing, and they took the reins, and Peter Lord is an incredible songwriter. Partner Jeffrey Smith is an incredible producer, and like I said, they're a self-contained band. We have the greatest musicians on the record. Pete is also a piano player, so it was amazing working with these people. Yeah, I saw, um, uh, I think DeLui mentioned how, like, Sugar Honey Ice Tea came up because you guys were in the studio with them and talking about, you know, different ideas. And I think Peter had mentioned that his grandma wouldn't curse and said she'd say Sugar right. Honey Ice Tea. Yeah. So was that, like, the general working experience between you guys? Were you just sort of be brainstorming on the spots? Things were organic like that sometimes, like, like with, with Sugar Honey Ice Tea, that was what it was, and when they touched on it, that's when they put it together, like, oh, sit down there, I see. And then they came up with the concept for the song. We call it the shit song, S-H-I-T, but since nobody wants to say, you know, even in the record, on the, I think on the clean version, it's like, I love you, I love you. So it's like, you didn't even get to say shit. But, but yeah, it was organically made. A lot of those songs were kind of like that, but because Pete was such a great songwriter, he, he came up with these dope melodies. And, and the funny thing was is that I came from a group like TKA that was a dance music group that we had choreography, we were dancing and singing and little rapping and everything, a little bit here and there. So when I put Goodfellas together, I wanted Goodfellas to be DVD. I wanted to be Velvet DeVoe. Like, I wanted to dance and I wanted to do hip-hop R&B. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Because I already had came from something like that, but it was more on the dance, pop, Latin side. So one of the guys that originally I remember that we had, his name was Barry, and Barry was more of a rapper and a dancer. So it kind of fit. You know, me and Dulu was going to sing, we were all going to dance, Barry was going to rap. And then when we started making these songs, it started going in a whole different direction. It started becoming like more adult, contemporary, top 40 kind of records that you needed more singing than dancing. So we got rid of, we got rid of Barry. And then I ended up getting Darren Henson. And I don't know if you know who Darren Henson is. Darren Henson is, was one of the biggest choreographers. He was on the HBO series Soul Food. He played Lem. And he was responsible for Jennifer Lopez, NSYNC, Bye Bye Bye, Britney Spears. Like, he choreographed all those videos. So he was a personal friend of mine. He was living in the Bronx, but I actually met him in Japan with TKA. So that's another thing. Um, we became friends all the time, and I ended up putting him in Goodfellas. 
So now I'm like, I got a great singer like the Louis Avan, but I got an incredible dancer and, and, and choreographer in Darren Henson. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be crazy. This TDD ain't going to be able to mess with us. So it was like, again, we started recording more songs, more songs, and it started calling for more singing. So we had to get rid of Darren, and then we had to now do a search because we had a bunch of showcases coming up with some labels, and we had songs like, you know, If You Walk Away and Sugar Honey and T, and we had like all these songs that were more top 40. So my manager, Guy Rute at the time, he told me, listen, I got this guy, and I want you to check him out, He's from California, Sacramento, I believe. And I want to bring him to rehearsal. I was like, all right. So they brought Ray. His name is Ray Vincere. Ray came, and Ray had this big, big Teddy Pentagrass kind of voice. <laughs> and it just fit right into what we were doing. And Ray got into the group. We were probably like oh, more than halfway through the album. So we ended up, ended up having to put Ray on If You Walk Away, like towards the end. Sugar Honey she was the last record, so we ended up putting him on that record. And, you know, he was on some other records on the album. At the time, I didn't really sing too many leads because I didn't want to. Like, I came out of TK, and I had been in the music business for so long. I just wanted to give somebody else a shot. I was happy with just doing backgrounds and harmonies and doing stuff. And, you know, I was more of the business guy and trying to put things together and keep everybody in check. So Ray stepped right in and then became the second singer. And we did the showcase, and we ended up getting a deal on... Avatar, Polydor, A&M records, and we did a bunch of showcases, and we had different labels, you know, Sony, uh, Arista, Sylvia Rose was going to sign us, and that fell through, and uh, Larry Robinson, who had a small label in LA, California, called Avatar, he heard everything and, and went crazy and came, flew to New York and signed us on the spot, and he had a distribution deal through Polydor Records. And A&M was the label that was doing the, the promotion for the album. So we finished the album, and we recorded 200 of the video in Brooklyn, New York, and that's where Good, Goodfellas was born. You know, I've, I've always been on the consuming side listening to music, so I don't know too much on this side of trying to get signed. What, what were these right. showcases like that you would be doing? The showcases were, were live showcases where we had to sing live for the label. That's why it was so important for us to get the third singer so that we can all harmonize and sing together. It would have been cool for it to go the way I wanted it to go, but I kind of thought it was dope that went in the direction that it went because I, I ended up using Darren anyway. He was the one who choreographed the video for Sugar and C and If You Walk Away, so he was kind of still involved. But it was, it was, I mean, for me, I have been doing the music for so long that so I don't get nervous or anything anymore. It's like, to me, it's work. It's like, just go up there and do what we got to do. And we went up there and we sang for them. And basically, everybody that we went went to wanted us or wanted to sign us. But it was either they had a group that was kind of like us already on the label. But, you know, we was up there singing our asses off and doing what we had to do. It was cool. But that's how it was for us. And you said you'd done a number of the songs before you brought Ray on. Did you have to re-record them, or were these just a demo version and not the final finished version? Yeah, a couple of songs we had to kind of revamp and go back and have them sing. I don't think uh, the Louis ever sang the second verse on uh, If You Walk Away, so we just threw Ray on the record and he sang it. And we put him a little bit on, on Sugar Honey Ice Tea and some other records on it. So he just really had to come in and just add his voice to what already was there. And it was it was cool. It was a little crazy because he came from a, a different background when it came to music. He used to do more house music and stuff like that that he was into. You know, it was it was brilliant for the family stand to kind of coach everybody on the vocals and, and to make sure that they got what they wanted out of the singer and was able to bring something out of him that I don't even think he knew he had. And that was like the genius of the family stand that they were able to do that. They got the best out of you. And even when I didn't want to certain things, he was like, come on, Adrian, we need you to come in here and do this, and do this harmony, and do this background part, or whatever, and I would do it, but it would, it would sound so great. And the, the, the album evolved to something that I didn't think it was going to evolve into, because like I said, I wanted, I wanted to do uh, R&B hip hop, and we, it, we turned out to be more of a top 40 group. I, I really feel that the Goodfellas album was, was ahead of its time. Yeah, it's, it's funny now you say that Ray had done, house music first because I found a video on YouTube that was said Ray Ventier 
And I listened to it, though, and I was like, this is not R&B at all. So I was like, this yeah. can't be him. But now you're saying that, and I'm like, oh, maybe that was him then. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's definitely out there. I hope it was a good song because some of the stuff that I've heard him do outside of that was great. Yeah, it's, it's just interesting that you guys did come from such a diverse set of backgrounds. It's almost like you stumbled into an R&B group. Because, uh, like, like I said, Ray's from Sacramento, California, Delouis from Carroll City, Miami, and I'm from Spanish Harlem, New York. And it's just, and I had to kind of orchestrate all that stuff, I, you know, from picking the, the singers, the producers, the management. It was, you know, they, they always had to run things through me because, like, this was my brainchild. This was my baby. I wanted to make sure that it went, you know, the way I, I envisioned it. So... One thing I, I was listening to the songs and watching the videos last night, and I don't know if it was intentional, but like you said, like Sugar Honey Ice Tea is a shit song. And I, I felt right. like watching both videos, there was like a, a tinge of humor and comedy, and then even watching you guys on Planet Groove, you were very funny. And I don't know, <laughs> is that something you guys intentionally wanted to bring out there and just no, like, we, make it more no, relaxed? I think that I'm really, I think that, I, I think I should have been a comedian, to be honest. I should have definitely been in the movie. I, I think that I'm funny and I've always been funny. And, you know, the Louie and Ray's funny, so we're always kind of like snapping on each other. And it was a fun time. But yeah, we definitely have that humor. You know, I'm from New York. It's like we snap on people and like I'm, I'm known for that. I'm known for getting on people all the time. But yeah, we definitely was uh, a funny group. Like we knew how to get along. We know, you know, people like us. Like I always live by the motto, if people like you, they want to work with you. If they don't like you, they're not going to want to work with you. And by the way, we, I didn't touch on one thing on how we got the name Goodfellas. Stevie D from the Force and Bees, or the Force and Bees were really close friends of mine. Uh, one day we were singing and doing writing stuff, and Stevie D was rapping, and then he had said something like, something, something, Goodfellas. And while we were searching for the name, we were like, wait, wait, what did you say? Goodfellas, that's it. That's the name. And that's how we came up with the name Goodfellas, through Stevie D from the Force and Bees. <laughs> 